Hey, welcome to the Autostar channel. Today's fun project, we're gonna be checking out this window here to see what's going on. We're at the right rear window on this Nissan Maxima and it's not going up or down, it's kind of just stuck. So what's going on here basically is the uh, at the driver's door, there's the main control or main switch. Well, when you try to open or close the window, you know, even if you try to force it to go higher or lower, I'm hearing this relay click. Sounds like a relay. Anyway, so what that's telling me is that power is definitely getting back here. So even if I go up front right now and do that, you can hear it. Um, the other three windows are definitely working. So they go up and down with no problem. Sometimes even these windows can get stuck, you know, like the, uh, the gasket, the glass sticks to the gaskets. I tried uh, holding the power, like I said, the ignition's on right now and, you know, tapping on the glass trying to force it down it's not budging so what we need to do is we're going to definitely take the door panel off I did do my due diligence and printed out a wiring diagram just so I know where powers and grounds and all that good stuff is located this is it here for the right rear so why don't we get this panel off and uh, figure out what's going on all right I'm going to start by down in this uh, little handle here there's a little tab or a little button you just pull that up and take that out and down in there's a uh, Phillips head screw so we'll start with that or bolt whatever you want to call it first thing I do is that just get it out of the way and once that's loose we're good there and I'm just putting all that stuff off to the side sometimes these will pop out this one did if there's not too much goo down in there you know sticky soda and all that other good stuff so that's out now the uh, switch itself um, I believe this one pops out. It's been a while since I, I took one of these off, but you put a little pressure behind here and then pop this up and out like I just did. So here's our switch. I squeeze the tabs on the side here to release this switch and that just comes out. So we, we could test the continuity of this if we wanted to. This is probably its own little module right there. In fact, on the wiring diagram, they call this the uh, right rear door control unit. So I don't think that's the issue right now. So we'll put that over there. And then there's some clips on the bottom here. I take one of these plastic pry tools and can you see what I'm doing? Nope. Aim this down a little bit and just put this back in here. There's some clips and I pull back towards myself here. I like using the plastic ones because they tend not to scratch the paint. You know, now that'll prevent rust. So we do that. And you'll hear them pop. I'm pulling down on the bottom as I do that. There we go. It's getting there. There we go. All right, get closer. And now these, from what I remember, this one slips out here. You gotta put prep, oops, can't see a thing again. Sorry, had to move the camera. There it goes. And then you just pull this handle out. And she should pop out for you. There we go. So there's some little, little tabs right in here that you're putting pressure on gently behind there. When you go to remove the panel itself, right back here is gonna be under this black like rubber gasket trim piece. You don't have to remove that. You can just pull it out away from you and then wiggle this up and it should, should pop off, there it goes. Okay, so that's out. And then what we can do is um, to diagnose this to make it easier. I mean we can put uh, 12 volts here and ground power and ground But I'll just plug the switch back in Like this and now you should be able to hear it clicking pretty good. Let's zoom in So let me uh, it looks like somebody been here before let me pull this oh, 200 mile an hour tape here. This is just a clear vapor barrier and it's on here with some butyl it's like that black sticky stuff. So I just like yank on it pretty fast to release it. It seems like the faster you pull on it. Now if it rips, I'll just use some um, clear packing tape, like uh, you know, the stuff for siding, the Tyvek tape. And I'll fix it with that. It has a small tear. So let's pull this back. So this is our connector to feed, that feeds the motor. And what I'm gonna do is just back probe this and then I'm going to take my test light 
and just connect it to this. We should have a circuit completed here when I hit the switch. So when I hit the switch, this should light up and we're lighting up. Okay, so the click is actually in the module here, in the switch is what I'm hearing this, like a relay or just a spring. So we're good. I'm gonna try an old Fonzie repair trick. I've got my hammer and I'm gonna tap this motor give it a couple of wraps and see if it frees it up. Nope. Looks like we're pretty much done here. Well, we know what the issue is, so it's definitely in this motor here. Uh, I don't think anything else is the problem. There are two bolts that hold the regulator to this glass, and what I'll do now is remove those bolts and take the regulator out. I'm going to try to see if I can uh, free the motor up. If not, I will get another one, source another one, and uh, we'll take it from there. So let me do that. Let me just pull these bolts and we'll get to the next step. I have a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench and I'm just gonna get in here on these two bolts, see if I can free them up. I did put tape up on the glass as you make. Now you can't see it, so I taped the glass up up here you see that at the very top that way uh this won't drop out fall on me by accident all right there's one bolt got that little guy out and this other one's not going to be as easy sorry i can't film it for you guys but i'll show it to you if i can when we get to that step Yeah, so these ratcheting wrenches really, really help out. This one's almost out. Oops. Take that. Oop, there it goes. There goes the bolt. Okie dokie. Hold it back up. Oh, boy. Got the number two bolt out there, so that should be free. Now, let's zip out these other bolts down. Here's two. Huh. regulator now these there's four of these that hold it in they're all the same size so don't worry about that let me uh, disconnect the power here or the connector I should say not the power let's see here there we go and get this jawing out of here hopefully there it goes all right I'm gonna slide it through you guys can see here Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna slide it through right here. Right down here, come on. Come on. Just, you don't wanna cooperate. All right, maybe I'll take you out the top. Oh, the struggle. Struggle's real. All right, let me get the light out of the way. That'll help us a minute. Okay, so coming out the top hole. All right, here's our motor. Um, let's uh, let's see what we can do here. I don't see any rust or corrosion. Uh, the cables, the cables in here are not rusty. They're not bound up, so that's uh, interesting. Now the motor's held on to the regulator with these three Phillips heads, so maybe we'll just take the motor off. Now what's interesting is this motor feels warm. Feels a little bit warm. Let me take the motor off the regulator and uh, we'll get to the next step. It just comes out with these three bolts. 
So I got the three bolts out. They're very tight. I use a, uh, a number three Phillips screwdriver. That's the big boy right there. Anyhow, uh, you get those three out and then the motor will separate. There's a little clip here for the harness. You un undo that. That comes off in this, just like this. That's the way it's set up. The orientation. Here's your hanging pins, I guess you call them, or hangers. And then this is off to the left. So in here, it's uh, basically a 3 8 drive on this regulator. And let's see, uh, I guess we can put power directly to this and see if it'll move or if this regulator's frozen. Let's see, you know what I'll do? I'll take a 3 8 ratchet, which is right here in the, uh, right here in the box. So let's do that. Let's put a 3 8 I'm gonna put a, orientation mark on here so I know exactly where this was okay so I drew a line right here to tell me where I'm at and let's put a mark on this mark this too that's that and that one's that okay So I put a mark on the regulator right here, an alignment mark, and then I'll just take a 3 8 put it in there and see if I can turn this, see if it wants to move. Yeah, it's moving. So you can see, look right here, this would be the window coming down. Actually, I got it upside down, but that would be coming down. It seems to move pretty smoothly. There's no binding. Like I say, sometimes you'll see rust in these. These cables will rust up. And, uh, you know, that could be cause for the problem. But this moves freely. There's nothing wrong with the regulator. So we know the regulator's fine. We don't need to order that. It's, uh, it's in the motor or the, uh, there's gears in this case here or shot or jammed up. So let me see if I could spin that. Let me get a pair of pliers. Uh, put a, actually, let me get a. A wrench on that sucker for us to test this test the gears in here just make sure I know they're not stripped because the motors not moving but I got a 10 millimeter wrench and I'm just gonna wiggle this sucker a little bit maybe we can free up whatever's bad otherwise the motors just shot so let me go put 12 volts to this sucker and see if it'll spin so we're back at the car and instead of hooking up you know I don't have a power probe so I'll just take this uh, you know, one way to get 12 volts to it is to hook it in there. Um, now the ignition is on and I have my alignment marks right here so I know where this was. And if I hit power now, you see it? it's moving and I hear it. Okay, so the only thing we did was take a 10 millimeter and wiggled this 3 8 so something must be hung up in here there's a dead spot in the motor or something uh, it's probably best to replace this right now so that it doesn't happen again what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to take the motor out and clean the contacts here where the uh, 12 volts come in and clean that up lubricate it it's mine that's why i'm doing it this way if it was yours i would just replace it so this motor is held in here with two Phillips screws, so let's do that. Let's loosen these up. That's uh, it's interesting how it freed up. I, I kind of suspected it because there wasn't any rust. I got to be careful here so stuff doesn't fall out. But I don't know where it goes back. You know, you know how that goes. That make for a long day. And then after these two are out here, I'm gonna wiggle this gently. So okay. So here's our contacts right here. Right in here are two contacts, and I don't know if this is going to separate from the gear. Oop, there it goes. So here's our here's our worm gear. And what I'll do is, you know, there's some grease there. I'm just going to get crazy. I'm going to spray some lubricant, some silicone down in here. And I'll clean these contacts. I'll plug it back in. And I'm going to call this a day, but... It seems like it's okay in here. I don't see any corrosion. Be right back. So I'm going to shoot a little silicone down in there. In that little gearbox, just a little bit. And uh, it can't hurt anything. 
And then let me get some some grease on these gears here. This is all metal. I don't know if the gears, I think the gears in there are plastic, so I'll use silicone paste on this. And then these contacts are, I don't know if you can see them, but these contacts are kind of dirty. Let me, uh, let me clean that up. And uh, we carry on. So those are a whole lot shinier. Put some dielectric grease on this. Oops, that was a big old blob. Put some of that there. Can't hurt it. Put some on there. Okay, so we're all back together. Let's go put it in the car. So I plugged it back in, and this would be the up position right now. So let's see if it'll go down. I don't want to get my fingers here, so don't, you know, don't hurt yourself if you're doing this manually. Make sure your fingers are clear of the cable, and it's moving nice and smooth. There's no dead spots, and uh, let's put this sucker back in. And go like this, get the bracket or the regulator in and then the motor. Be careful to wire the harness. Don't blind yourself with the work light either. It's no fun. And just kind of maneuver it in place. Oh boy. There we go. Come on. That's it. Sometimes you gotta talk to it. Sometimes you gotta use bad words too. So anyway, that motor has, um, I think I showed it to you when, when it was out. It has the two brackets on it. So, like two little hooks. So that's the tricky part, just getting those lined up. And where are we at? There we go, there's one. Oh, come on, where are you? Oops. There he is. Oh, she got twisted. She got twisted when we were out. Good duck. No, she didn't. I was almost a bad YouTuber and didn't show you guys what goes where up close. So let me show you. So basically, here's our motor. And you've got three bolts, two here and one here, 10 millimeter. Here's the center of the gears where that you know, we just had it out. And then there's two little hooks. So there's one here and one here, and they'll just hang. So temporarily, you set it in there. Now here's our regulator, and that's held in with four bolts. So you got two up here, and then you've got two down here. That's one, one there and one there. And then up in here are your two bolts, the bracket that the window has. There's a white clip here, you see that? And then that one down there. Well, those two, attach here and here to the regulator. So basically, that's how it all works. It's pretty simple. And then this was our connector, our two-wire connector for the power. Yeah, don't forget that. Um, that reminds me, here's our, here's our connector right here. So we gotta plug this in. Uh, if you don't do that, you won't have much luck. Anyway, that's that. So with everything back together before you put your vapor barrier back, um, put that in, you know, nice and neat. Uh, let's give it a test. I'm gonna go down, the ignition is on in the car. A uh, little hint is, or a little trick is, remember it was stuck in the up position, so we had to get these two bolts that hold the regulator to the glass. Well, when it's down like this, there's actually an access hole right here where my finger's pointing. So you can get to that 10 millimeter bolt really easy. So if it's down, or if you wanna get it started while it's in the up position, get this one here. That one's not too bad on the right bring it down and then go ahead and do uh, your one on the left, your bolt there. So anyway, this thing's nice and smooth. I'm satisfied. Like I say, you may want to consider replacing your motor if this is happening to you, but I'm good with this. With the vapor barrier back on, it's time to hang the door panel. Let me just show you this real quick if you're not familiar. Most door panels have these uh, 
kind of clips here. They slide on and off. This one's being a little tight. Here's one down here. So they're shaped like that and they kind of slide on. Make sure that they're all in there and that you don't have any uh, left inside the door frame because that'll hold you up. Take your uh, pry tool and I'll leave a link in the description for if you don't have one of these, that'll help you pop it right out if it's stuck. Anyway, just set them in there and uh, make sure your motor's hooked up. Make sure you got the power to the motor. Now this is just for our switch. We'll be able to reach through for that. Some of them, uh, if you have power locks, you know, this, this is kind of similar to many different makes and models, but this one, this particular one, it doesn't have a separate uh, harness for the power locks. So we don't have to worry about that. It's built in up here. Anyway, keep that in mind though, if you're doing this on a different type of car. And what you want to do is get the top started. That's what I usually do. Uh, this one's, like I said earlier, is a little tricky because of this, this gasket. It's definitely doable. Just take your time. If you want, there's a little trick here. Um, you can put a piece of string up under here and then pull it up over, just like when they put in some types, certain types of windshields. You can do that. Let me take my, I'm gonna take my plastic tool actually, and I'll show you. Now this car has tinted windows, so we wanna be careful not to um, disturb the, the tint. And what I'll do is just kinda of fold this up over you probably can't see what the hell I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Anyway, I'm just kind of bringing this piece of rubber right over the top. Oh boy, come on. There she goes. Little silicone on there probably wouldn't hurt either. And just working it in. Come on, just come on, you sucker. You don't want to rip the rubber. You don't want to rip your rubber when you do this. All right, there it goes. Boom, it just went down in there. So right in there, that's done. And these clips now should line up. We're gonna pushy, pushy. You'll hear them snap all the way around. I don't, this one probably had about six or eight. Yeah, that's about eight. And uh, that's good there, everything's solid. Now I did clean my hands before I started this. That'll save you some time. Don't put fingerprints all over. Uh, unless it's your car and you like fingerprints, but this is my car and I don't like fingerprints. Anyway, so that's on. Now where's our clip for the door? I just gotta find that real quick. But um, reach down in here and here's our switch harness right here. That's easy enough. We're gonna plug that in. It can only go one way. A good time to uh, Test it again right now. That's just clicked in is right now. Uh, of course the ignition's off. All right, so go turn your ignition and put it and try it. I'm confident. We'll give it one more test before we're done. So that goes in there, just snaps in nice and neat. Here's our uh, door handle and there's that one screw, remember that goes down through the bottom. And this does go a certain way, it's beveled. I don't know if you can see it. So make sure you're putting it in the right direction. Um, that goes like that. Take our screw. So I'm glad it worked out. Now I won't have any backseat passenger complaints. They can complain about my driving, but they won't be able to complain about, uh, about their window not going down. Okay, so the little button's in there. Now where did that clip go? Oh boy, I gotta find it. There it is. I found it. It's right under the wiring diagram. Okay, and this just goes in here, behind there, and that's gonna snap in for you. Uh, should snap in for you, come on. Everything's gotta be difficult, you know? It never fails. So, let me get a flat head. Get this sucker. Actually, I'll use my plastic tool here. Come on, come on, sucker. Oh boy. See, just when you think it's going smooth. All right, we're gonna take her back out. I'm telling you, the struggle is real sometimes. There we go, put this part in first, back here by the, the lock button, and then push this front end, that's it. Okay, then what I always do is, just to be sure, yeah, we're gonna test the window, but 
we want to get our tools out of here. We definitely want to um, check operation of the door, you know, make sure the rods and everything is still good. It's locked right now. The window's down, that's a good thing. Get locked out. That works good. Let me fire up the ignition. All right, we got some power there. Come around here, try her out. Oh yeah, mama. Oh yeah, we're back in business. Nice. Done. So that fix isn't too bad. I mean, if you have some experience, you can get this knocked out in less than a half hour, 20 minutes. But here's the deal. The first thing you want to do is, if I didn't hear that clicking or clacking in there, I would have definitely went to the fuse box. Of course, you get your wiring diagram, uh, find out where all that is and what fuses to go chase. You know, check your wiring. And then, like in our case, we had power down there. We, we used a test light and we want to check the motor and the, and the uh, regulator. So basically those regulators can freeze up. They can, those cables can get rusty and rotted and they not move. You could get rust or corrosion or those gears in there, that plastic gear housing, they can break. The motor can go bad, all kinds of crazy stuff. This one was a little interesting. We put that 10 millimeter on there, jiggled the motor a little bit. I don't know, I guess it jiggled the gears, jiggled the motor, turned it down there. And uh, let's say the rotor turns inside the stator. I don't know if there was a dead spot or maybe it was the connectors, those two little connectors internal in there, had corrosion, whatever it was, we brought it back to life. Uh, you may want to change it out, like I said earlier, but I'm okay with this for now. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna last a while. But uh, this, this right here could definitely be your, let me turn it around so you can see it, can definitely be your savior if, you, uh, if your diagnosis doesn't go that easy. So thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe and like if you can, that helps my channel grow. Uh, check me out on Instagram, that's Ozstar with the number one after it. Facebook is Ozstar, and of course right here on YouTube. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.